Welcome to Supernatural with Robin. It's a podcast about living the supernatural life with a touch of politics, off-grid living with helpful hints and tips for authors. We believe the supernatural should be natural. Did you know that you are a superhero, that you are supernatural? And um, what I mean by that is you, Jesus is the prototype and you can do everything that Jesus can do because Jesus was our example. Jesus is our brother. Look at it this way. You have the mind of Christ. You are the body, uh, the temple of the Holy Spirit, and you are one spirit with God. He is the head you are the body. You are all one. Okay, so think of it that way. When I take communion, I these are things that I think about, that I decree and def- confess and speak and engage. But some of the other things that I thought was really interesting, and I never saw it this way before, and I hope that you can, that you can really start going through the Bible, anyway, Gen- um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which is actually part of the Old Covenant, because Jesus didn't die yet. But you can see Jesus' life and everything he can do, you can do. He said the son can do nothing except what he, the, what he sees the father doing. So right there, that shows me that we have the ability to see into the supernatural realm. It is our given ability because we are children of God. We have the DNA of God in us. So as children of God, and if Jesus said, I can only do what I see my father do, that means that we can see our father. Cat Kerr talks about how we can see God face to face. Uh, because we're his kids, we should crawl up in his lap and be snuggling with him and everything else. So, so just go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and look at everything Jesus did and put your name in there. Think about it this way. If Jesus could do only what he saw his father do, do that means that we can visit heaven because the father is seated at the throne in heaven. Uh, I know we can visit heaven, but these are scriptures that help us to grasp that reality that we can visit heaven. Uh, it, Jesus saw his father and he did what he saw his father do. So we, the father is sitting in heaven. We're seated in heavenly places. We are a spirit being. We have a body and we have a soul. I used to say we're a spirit being. We live in a body. But you know what? I don't think that we are supposed to be living in our body. I think our spirit was wrapped around our body. And when we fell... Our spirit now is housed in our body. I believe that Adam and Eve walked on the earth in their spirit and their body was inside their spirit. That the spirit was their covering. And that was the covering that they lost where the spirit is now inside the body. The body kind of rules. The mind rules now. What you see, hear, feel, taste, and smell becomes your reality. You think that's all that exists. But when the spirit was there... When the, the spirit is supposed to be our reality. And then the physical is just to connect us here with earth. So if you kind of think of it that way, um, you can begin to move in the spirit realm. We, everything supernatural belongs to us. The new age people have taken it, twisted it, distorted it. And of course they're led by demonic spirits. And they say, no, 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 this is new age. This is a cult. Christians can't touch it. But you know what? We are supernatural. God created the supernatural and he created it for his kids. The supernatural has been hijacked by the occult. And and so many Christians are afraid of the word, different words of, you know, not just raising the dead, healing the sick, casting out demons, but traveling in the spirit, being uh, two places at one time, um, um, traveling in the spirit. I mean, we are not being taught this. There are finally some brave souls out there that are teaching about that we can travel in the spirit. Of course, it's a dangerous thing if you're in the occult and if you're doing it just because you enjoy it and you have no connection with God. It's all about a relationship. And when you have a relationship with God, you can do this. And you know, I think a lot of us have traveled in the spirit without knowing it. I know one time I did, I had a dream and I went, um, uh, through the earth, came out the other side and went up into the sky, into heaven and was at some place ministering and some of the times when you feel deja vu I believe that it's because we were there in the spirit and sometimes when you're attracted to a person you feel as though you really know them I believe that's, and you feel deja vu I believe that's because 
spiritually you're connected to him. Um, if you ever listen to Jesse DePlantis, when he went to heaven, he saw us. Uh, first of all, if I forget, mention Jesse DePlantis somebody if I get sidetracked so that you can um, bring me back here. Uh, but what, the word of God says that God is the father of light and that let our light shine. And it refers to us as um, spirits of light. It also refers to the angels as angels of light. So God is the father of lights. And Jesse Duplantis talks about, when we, and so does Kat Kerr. Um, when we were in heaven, the word of God says we are a spirit we always were. And so where were we before we had a human body? We were in heaven living inside of God. Jesse Duplantis talks about how he saw when he died and went, went, I don't know, remember if he died. He didn't die. He was just translated to heaven. He saw us as little spirits going in and out of God. Um, we had relationship with each other. Spirit beings are always, they don't die. We are going to live forever in hell or forever in heaven. But we are a spirit being. Our physical body dies, but who we really are, a spirit being, lives forever. And so I believe those people that we connect with, or we feel as though we've been here before, or had this conversation before, is because we did, because we did it supernaturally. We did it in the spirit realm. But I think children, as children, we're taught that, oh, your imagination's bad. You don't really see, uh, you really don't have this friend that you think you have that you're talking to. Children see it. Animals see the spirit realm. And as adults, we, uh, we forget. Somehow we're taught like, oh, that's wrong. And, and, and we lose our imagination. Our imagination is created by God and it's our connection to the supernatural. It's not just something we make up in our head. It really is another world that we are part of and connected to. And when we get so um, indoctrinated with church instead of with a relationship um, with the Holy Spirit, then we're going to think those doctrines are truths because they've been passed down and passed down. But it's all about a relationship. And the Holy Spirit is a spirit like we are a spirit and we are one spirit with him and we are the physical body that carries the connection of the Holy Spirit of God on the earth. So we are we are supernatural superheroes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Only superheroes if we are using the powers that we've been given. And we have been given powers. And finally, there are some people like Praying Medic um, and um, uh, Sid Roth, Patricia King, Kat Kerr, um, talking about the courts of heaven, Robert Henderson, uh, Eon Clayton. These people are finally preaching about the spirit realm which is natural and normal in our realm not the occult okay the occult that you see somebody levitating you hear the word levitating you think oh, oh my god they're involved in the cult god created the supernatural it belongs to us the cult has hijacked it has stolen it made it afraid um even people who aren't Christian are attracted to the supernatural because we're naturally supernatural it's normal but the people who do not have Jesus, the demonic realm, the spirit demonic realm, that side has attracted and taken over the people who are not Christians, getting them involved in psychics. I believe most prophets, if they weren't saved, would be psychics because they're tuned in to the supernatural, into that spirit realm. Um, you know, they get involved in, 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 in this stuff and they twist it and turn it and, and, and do bad stuff. So we have to be light of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is Jesus is the key and Jesus is the door okay yeah Justin Abram I love him he's a good source too thanks for that Rodney um, and Ray, Rama Rama not Rama Rama but anyway um so we can do everything Jesus said now here's some other things to think about Jesus perceived their thought okay in the occult world they call it telepathic okay they stole that jesus perceived their thoughts it they're not it's not saying like mm, jesus figured out what they were thinking no jesus understood their thoughts jesus is our prototype he's our big brother everything he as he is so are we in this world so jesus perceived their thoughts um we have the ability to communicate through thoughts um, as far out as that sounds, it is not new age. It is not a cult. They have stolen it. It belongs to us. Everything supernatural belongs to us. Okay. Um, 
we have the ability to walk through the crowd. Jesus did not walk through um, 2,000 or 5,000 angry people who took him to the edge of the city to throw him over because they didn't like what he was saying. And it said then Jesus walked through the crowd. Well, it didn't say that they, they parted really nice and Jesus walked through them. It didn't say that. Jesus walked through the crowd because he became invisible. They didn't see him. He, he worked in the spirit realm. His spirit transformed, transported, or made invisible or made trans, um, transformed his body so that he could walk through that crowd without them seeing him. We have these same abilities and there's all kinds of, um, uh, because we have the internet, there's all kinds of uh, people who have these experiences now more and more. And if you look up old monks and old um, from Scot from Ireland and Scotland and um, some of those older countries, if you look up some of those people who were more isolated, they had all kinds of awesome experiences in the supernatural. And they're in some of the books, if you can find some of those old books. Uh, but we have to remember the supernatural belongs to us. It does not belong to the cult. Okay, so Jesus walked through the crowd. He was able to m create his fit, make his physical body so he could walk through a crowd so they couldn't stone him. He he raised the dead. He healed the sick. He cast out demons. It's not a formula. It's a relationship. Seeing what your father does. Expect to visit heaven. Expect to see angels. Um, I've seen. I used to see more demons than angels, but now that I take pictures of the angels in the sky, I mean, I my my kids say, "Come on, mom, stop taking pictures of the sky. Are you going to do that all day?" Yes. Look at. Don't you see that face? So I'm always taking pictures of the angels in the sky. They are the hosts of heaven. Are so awesome. Okay, so Jesus walked, he walked on water. I don't know anybody who has done that yet, but we can walk on water. He did it. We can do it. Anything that anybody did in the Bible is available for us today. Speaking in tongues is our most powerful weapon that we can use, and it's for everyone, and it's for today. And the Bible even says that it's for you and your children and for all those who will believe. Okay, so tongues is a very, very important gift and power gift that we have. So we can walk on water. Um, can't say that I ever have tried. Um, didn't see no need for it. We can multiply food. If you ever heard of Heidi Baker, they multiply food all the time. They raise the dead, heal the blind all the time. This stuff should be coming more and more normal. Um, I believe there's offices out there of the prophet, evangelist, teacher, um, and gifts out there. But I believe God has made all the gifts available to everybody. The ones that, like, I walk, I walk in the office uh, of a prophet and the anointing of an evangelist. And that's what God told me, that I, I have the office of a prophet and the anointing of an evangelist. And, and so I believe that if somebody has an office, it just means that they have greater responsibility and greater sphere of influence. But I don't necessarily think it means that they have more of the gift. Um... I just feel as though everybody has all the gifts. You just have to develop them. You have to believe them. You have to walk in them. Jesus had words of knowledge. I believe everybody has words of knowledge. <laughs> um, I believe everybody... You can start giving a word of knowledge just by whatever scripture pops in your mind when you're talking to a person. Whatever picture pops in your mind. Learn to trust that the Holy Spirit in you who is supposed to be your comforter and your teacher is teaching you how to do these things. He's teaching you how to see the hosts of heaven. Um, you should desire, thank you, Rich, you should desire the spiritual gifts. I desire them. I want them all. I want everything. And when I take communion, I confess. I confess the DNA of God is inside of me, transforming me. I engage the DNA of God to, to heal my body. It's medicine and it's health. It, it, and I create triggers. Every time I open the door, I want to remember that Jesus is the door to the supernatural. That I can see and I want to begin to trust that I see and 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 um, the experiences that I have. Take notes. Do a journal on the things that you see. And then you will begin to trust the Holy Spirit more. When you begin to see in the spirit realm or you heard something, felt something, tasted something, write it down. Go back and review it. And the more you write it down, the more that you will have. Because basically God showed me that the more you focus your attention on something, the more it will manifest to you. If you're studying demons demons will manifest to you you know what people say don't worship angels we're not worshiping angels think about it this the church 
magnifies demons and almost worships them, worships them more than angels. They know the demons' offices, their positions, their names, and what they do, how to get delivered to them, from them. But do they know any of their angels' names? Do they know any of the angels? Do they see angels? Do they talk to angels? Angels are supposed to be ministering spirits that minister to you. Do you give your angels assignment? How can they minister to you if you're not communicating with them? You can't work with a team with anybody unless you hear your hear each other's voices, see your faces, express things, talk to each other, experience each other. I have an angel named Thomas. He looks like a gorilla. I, that means twin, and I have twins. So I'm not really sure what yet what his his um, job is but today I met an angel I posted on Facebook an angel of um, I, I said Holy Spirit what is the name of that angel I posted on Facebook and he said his name is Braveheart Brave Hearts and I said why is his name that and he says because he ministers to the people who have hurting hearts and I thought wow that's so cool so if you just ask and keep pursuing keep setting your eyes toward the supernatural believing your supernatural keep reading books and posts and things that you can get a hold of you will have more of it will it will magnify more and more I didn't have supernatural encounters till I started reading other people's books other people's ideas and then I had totally different so I know it wasn't copying them totally different uh, supernatural experiences and encounters and I, I've written in them in, in several of my books I have 40 books almost or four dozen books out there right now that I've written on the supernatural so get my books all of them are free if you're on Kindle Unlimited except for my angel books my angel books the series that I have um, they're not on Kindle Unlimited but I do have them on sale you can get all six including the one I just released on the course of heaven for $25 um, as PDF files don't sell them don't give them away okay um, but you can check them out anyway so you can it says I only do what I see my father do so you can expect to see in the supernatural realm it says I only do what I hear my father say um, you can hear God you can see God uh, you can experience God you can experience the supernatural you you have the ability uh, to perceive people's thoughts remember Jesus saw uh, Nathan I think it was under the tree before Nathan walked up to him so you can see uh, there in the supernatural there is no limit of time and space um, uh, you can see uh, a mile down the road or a thousand miles down the road because there is no space there is no time and, and that's why you see the angels layered uh, in the sky uh, there 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 is nothing that was created for our physical body and for us so um, yeah, you guys, share experiences of angels that you have under my videos and share my videos to other people because, you know, this is, now we are getting back in the time where the church has to become what they were created to be and that's a supernatural body of Christ to, to reconcile the world to God. If we are not walking in the supernatural, then the occult is going to take it over. The occult is giving the world what they want. I know I got sidetracked again. I, I do this all the time. Sorry. Um, but the occult is giving the world what they want. They're giving them psychic readings. They're giving them dream interpretations. That stuff belongs to us. We should be able to go up to anybody and read their mail and encourage them and tell them how much God loves them and knows what they're experiencing. And he has a word for them. We should be able to go up and lay hands on whoever. We should be able to go up to and give dream interpretations or a word of prophecy because we are supernatural beings okay and and this is a great way of witnessing i think the best way of witnessing is supernatural uh, so many more people get saved when i witness to them in the supernatural than i just say them hey you know jesus died for your sins um receive the free gift of salvation and you can go to heaven well it's more to it than that you have a relationship and it's so awesome anyway so so you can hear and you can see, look at the scriptures in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Find everything that talks about what Jesus did. He walked on water. He turned water into wine. We can change one substance into another substance. And when you take communion, confess these things. Confess these. Engage the DNA of God. Uh, because when we take the body and the blood of Jesus, it's a symbol of the body. And the blood, the life is in the blood. So when we um, take communion, we are taking the 
we are taking God Jesus's physical and spiritual body suffered for us and then when we're, we're taking the physical body uh, symbol of his physical and spiritual body into our physical body and it becomes spiritual empowerment it's like vitamins and minerals and nutrition from heaven and uh, set up um, triggers and set up and engage it make it work for you when you take communion so anyway so I just wanted to share with that um, share with you that changing uh, changing one substance into another walking on water perceiving people's thoughts uh, being transported through time uh, space uh, uh, moving through matter um, hearing in the spirit realm because the spirit realm you are not trapped you don't have no limitations and I'm a newbie at this I like sharing because I'm sharing what I'm going through and I'm experiencing with you so my name is Robin Bremer net is my website please share this video with your friends and your family and your Facebook groups leave comments of your experiences if you want me Sometimes these get shared around so much that you make a comment and I never see it. So if you really have something you want to say, um, put my name there and then it'll click to me. Or um, email me at robinbremer.net or uh, Facebook message me or something. Um, but share these with your Facebook friends. Check out my um, other videos that I have on Facebook. And check out my books that I have for sale on Amazon. Just type in Robin Bremer, B-R-E-M-E-R. -E -E and about the first 15 pages are me. Um, anyway, I love you all. I love coming into your living room, your car, wherever you are. And I better go check my laundry and sharing and talking with you all. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching today's podcast. We hope it was a blessing to you. Remember to support us by sharing and subscribing to our podcast, YouTube channel, and other social media sites. Our links can be found below in the description. If you're ready to publish, promote, or get reviews for your book, check out our website at robinbramer.net. And remember, it's natural to be supernatural.